So what's happening? Yeah, so I hear this blizzard is is coming this way, and uh, they're telling uh, people. This is the fourth blizzard of your life that has happened in the last two years. (laughs) If one is to believe the politicians in New York. I'm on the line too, Glenn. It's Danny. Oh, hi, Danny. <laughs> hey. What's happening in your world? You got the uh, blizzard. It started now, so they shut down everything tomorrow. You know, so they can't get off the road as just soon as you can, and you know, the supermarkets are bare and. <laughs> We'll see, it's coming down steady now, starting to stick, so. We're yeah. supposed to be uh, on the margin someplace. It ends near the St. Lawrence. Did you hear about, um, I saw there was an article about uh, there's supposed to be some asteroid that's going to come close yeah. to the Earth. You can see it tonight, I'm told, but oh. it's already been at its closest oh, okay. closest point this morning, but you couldn't see it. I've they've been got, going... Hmm? They've got all of the uh, tracking supposedly done, however... I don't know if that takes into account if it ever hits something along the way and the uh, clip causes a change in direction. Direction. Very well be the asteroid we've been waiting for. That's what I was thinking. Oh. Oh. Gamora. Yeah, I've been I've been going over like uh, old talks. Uh, you you know you're going into the premise and 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 those workshops. It's actually transcribing it, and uh, when I I find when I transcribe it that I. I get I learn things that I I missed when I just listened to it. You know. Well, uh, most important thing I think that you have to remember is the people in charge are not often getting the whole story from their staff their assistance. In a, in a court, for example, they call the staff the registry. Registry is made out of two concepts in the code. The first, <coughs> first one is regal. Second one is That means that you may think you are applying to a court for something, but the registry, by keeping you uninformed as to what is required, can in fact get a um, a judge to say that you haven't responded to the requirements. And the judge, of course, has no idea what's going on. They're, they're not kept informed of the day-to-day happenings. 
or the fact that the uh, people who are in the registry are, in fact, sleeper cells that are either born to uh, immigrants in the country or brought in as immigrants who later uh, get pregnant and, and have a child. The, uh, the guy that attacked Parliament Hill back in October, his mom is one of the um, executives at the refugee board. And they're the ones who decide who's allowed to come in uh, to the country as a refugee. When they make, um, they hold a, a panel or a court, the judge can write out a decision which goes into a file and is never seen by the applicants. The um, anthropologist who works in the office can rewrite the decision and send it out under his signature as opposed to a signature from a judge. And that judge would think that he did his job and doesn't follow the case any longer while the court seems to have rendered a decision. And if you apply to another court for a leave to appeal, you face the same problem. And that exists all the way up to the Supreme Court. Phonetically, it comes down to the words leave to appeal. In other words, a leaf on a tree receives the energy from the sun. From that energy, it has to make a seed for the next generation. That seed normally comes out as a fruit, but not necessarily. It could be just a seed by itself. Leave to appeal means the energy transferred from the leaf to the peel of the fruit that is to be the product of the tree. But the journey between the leaf and the fruit is a twig. And if you remember, uh, in most of the courts, uh, maybe without the U.S., but certainly in most of the British Empire, um, and uh, going back in time, judges wore wigs. If number two is number one, and instead of the word twig, you replace it with wig, it explains that journey. 
over a twig is what we call bark. Or in other words, something that comes from the ark. The ark. Genetically engineered journey is what it is describing. The judge is the twig, but the one with the contact on the outside is the bark. The judge never sees the fruit because the journey ends at the peel. Mm. The fruit itself is a separate item. And when you go (coughs) into Supreme Court, for example, it is the... um, the right of the judges to refuse to hear your case. That's why you have to make an application based upon the concept of um, leave to appeal. In other words, the judge has the right to refuse, but he may or she may never even see what he's accepting or refusing because that decision would have been made by the people who control the twig or, in other words, the bark. They're the ones that speak out loud to the public, just like a dog barks. And they can prevent you from getting a hearing. And they they do that by writing rules for lawyers so that if you're not a lawyer, you're not able to work your way through the um, mechanisms they have set up. They don't accept the fact that as a citizen, you should have the right to appeal without a lawyer. And that's what Jenny and I are fighting with the courts in Canada. The decision made at the um, refugee board was made by a judge, and if after listening to him speak in three separate sessions, I would say he did not write the decision that was sent uh, that ends up then going to the... uh, federal court for appeal. If he did, some parts of it have been extracted. The decision he supposedly rendered was sent to us unsigned by the judge and only signed by a guy the judge in our first meeting, had described as, oh, he's just an office boy type. He just does paperwork. But that guy has a university degree in anthropology. As a a graduate in anthropology, he is interested in genetics more than in actual applicants. And if he can get the right genetics into the country, then those become the sleeper cells that are available 
to anyone who is running a um, an underground operation of terrorists, so they can fill the bureaucratic part of any court, of any police department, of any government agency or department with their people. Over time, of course, it takes takes a while. And the more they infiltrate the department, the easier it becomes to appoint the next employee. And that's how a mother ends up at the uh, uh, depart at the uh, refugee board, and her son ends up shooting a guy, a soldier on Confederation Square, and then runs into the House of Commons with a rifle and begins to shoot inside the building where he is then murdered by another bureaucrat called the Sergeant-at-Arms. Arms is a secret word linked to the name Marie, Mary, Marie in French. Marie is the mother of virgin birth for all Christians. It is a derivative of the word marinate. Marinate is soften them up for the kill. Soften them up for the cooking pot. It is based upon the diagram that I have of the big plan where you have um, the participants from Adam down to Mary. And the journey that they take is shaped like an 8-O, Marin 8, Nato. Plato. All of it is coded information which prevents the average person on the street to know that everything is rigged by those people who have, in fact, genetically engineered and later tweaked the genetics of every human being on the planet today, which has taken them 6,000 years from 4,000 B.C. to zero and 2,000 A.D. from zero. Over a 6,000-year period on a plan suggested by the seventh in the lineage from Adam, a man called Enoch, who then demonstrated its effectiveness by creating a child called Methuselah who is the longest living human being, if you believe the Bible. Enoch proved that you could remake human beings, and therefore Noah could follow up by creating a boat, Noah's Ark, on which the DNA of every living species on earth was placed while the existing gene pools were killed in a mass genocide uh, which was linked to a flood. Exactly.
exactly what we're expecting out of Lake Superior uh, down to Flushing, New York. The more we go through the system, analyzing it step by step, and I don't want to take credit for it because most of the credit belongs to cellular memory, which for short we call the cell. Cellular memory remembers all of the material that was placed in archives from 7,500 B.C. And therefore, knows more, can, can figure out more of why people do the things they do. One example, if you take 12 footballs, and you put them in a team's locker room. And one person takes one football and kind of practices with it because there's only a few minutes before the game. The other 11 footballs remain in the locker room during that period in time. If one considers that a locker room is designed based on a uh, theory that a magnetic field lying below can be used over time, time and time again, to send a magnetic message to the human beings who use that locker room, and that would lead to failure of many organs, but mostly on a short-term basis, depression. And if you're a gambler and you bet on the winning, usually winning team to win, and you know that before they go out for a certain game, many of the players will be depressed, the chance of you making money by betting on them to lose is pretty good. And what happens when an electromagnetic field sends out its surcharge is it blows up something. If a football happens to be there, some of the air will be forced out of the football. And when you remove the magnetic field, which only exists when someone sends an electrical charge, because the magnetic field by itself is not strong enough to do it, but if you send a, an electric charge to a magnetic field, you double its strength for the time that the uh, electricity charges the magnet. And that is what causes the problem. Then you shut off the electricity, the magnetism goes back to its regular place. If you build a vehicle, such as General Motors did, and you base the technology of your starter on a magnetic field being sent a message from the battery and increases its power, it turns it on. If you shut off the electricity, it turns it off. And therefore, General Motors, unknown to them, are now being sued and paying billions of dollars because people have been driving their vehicles down the road, usually at a speed of highway driving, and the starter shuts itself off, basically meaning, of course, you don't have power steering, you don't have power brakes, 
none of the control mechanisms in the car work, and people have been killed both in and outside of vehicles, and General Motors is being sued for billions. They don't realize that what those persons were doing were crossing a magnetic field, that the magnetic field, when charged, would shut off their vehicle. And that can only be done by one group of people. The people we here in Ontario call hydro. The Ontario hydro is who distributes the energy. And I can tell you firsthand about all of this since I live right on top of a magnetic field, which Hydro used a rod to link to my telephone system and brings a magnetic field into the house, which over a period of five years of staying in the basement has caused me a medical condition called Hydro Seal. It blew up a portion of my stomach. Caused it, when you, they shut it off, to drop into my scrotum and has prevented me from getting an erection. which they can control by selling you pills of Viagra. That's the lesson you learn when you have a functioning brain that realizes unless you do something about it, you are not a human being of the same quality and kind that existed 7,000 years ago. You are, in fact, a walking dead person. You have inherited from the original, and it has been tweaked over time through your ancestry the requirements of a robot. And when you say you like something or you hate something, it's your subconscious making the decision. The subconscious can be deciding on their behalf rather than on yours. That's why you have so many alcoholics. Because many of the things people do sober, they would not do, they, they would do drunk. That's how the system functions. Every human being you see around you that has not got that information and therefore can't make that linkage is standing around saying that's not me I would never do anything like that and yet every time a mass murder occurs or a serial rapist is on the loose and they catch him the people who know the person say I never would have believed that he would do something like that or she would do something like that. Never would have believed it because that's not them. Right on, it's not them. It's the robot being manipulated by an electromagnetic field imposed upon us by genetic engineers over the 
last 6,000 years. That's the problem we have in the world today. Why are policemen shooting black guys? Why are other people shooting policemen? It's because they've been genetically engineered and are being manipulated by electromagnetic fields. What's the symbol of that electromagnetic information? It's called the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is a box designed for electromagnetic control. And if you sit in a house over a magnetic field, chances are that over time, you will be manipulated beyond your control. Unless, of course, you know what they're doing. And the only way you can know what they're doing is to have a sweep of the entire property you live in and using a magnetometer, you can define what is the level of uncharged magnetism in your area, and number two, what is the level of magnetism that is charged once hydro sends you a surcharge that is grounded. Got the point? Yeah. yeah. Now put it out on the net and let everybody know what's happening to them. Ooh. Electromagnetism since before the ice age, you said? Electromagnetism has existed from the first moment that someone was able to see lightning occur on the planet. The lightning charges the already existing magnetism. But if you want to control it, rather than waiting for just a lightning bolt to occur, what you do is you link it to your electricity by putting in a magnetic rod. It's called an A-rod. And that A-rod completes the word road, R-O-A-D. And it's the road we're on. It's the way. It's the journey that we're on. And by sending a surcharge of electricity to your house, they can, in fact, awaken the magnet below it. And it will return its electromagnetic power through filaments. In other words, it needs very fine wiring. Hydro wires are not fine enough to do that, but telephone wires are fine enough. Think of it like a, an incandescent light bulb, how electricity travels through wires and no light occurs. But the minute you send it in a vacuum past a filament, it glows and turns on light. Now, if they, if they can tell you that a flashlight that runs on electromagnetic fields, which is 
how they design it with a a wire within leading to a filament, and by moving it up and down, you can cause a magnetic field to be built and turn on the lights. If they can tell you that that device is dangerous and put warnings on the side of it, imagine what it is when you're sending power directly from 220 volts, for example, going into the ground, lighting up the magnet, and sending through the lightning rod the ground. By the way, they've changed the, the type of ground they now use. is called a plate. Is it an accident? that they called it plate. When a plate is what you put inside of you, sits on until you put it in your mouth. And at the other end, when you die, they call you the late Mr. So-and-so. None of the English language is there by accident. It is a product of learning the lesson, of starting off with the language, they call it the language of Jesus, 2,000 years ago. Converting that to the emperors meant that it then became Latin. Roman, converting where the Romans spent most of their time, France, French, and moving into the area that would eventually develop North America, English. The languages of new modern type English and Spanish, by the way, for Christopher Columbus's sake, he was Italian, but he was funded by the Spanish monarchy. Spanish was created in the year Christopher Columbus came. To Hello? Hello? Oh, no. I think it disconnected. It sounds as if somebody wanted me not to speak to the public. Yep. <laughs> Cut me off. Yep. Yeah. Where was I when I was talking to you last? Uh, you said Spanish was created in Christopher Columbus. But yeah. Okay. We're coming to Canada. Christopher Columbus came in uh, 1534, was funded by the French, went back home, told the French, they sent a guy by the name of Jean Chabot, whose um, relationship in the code converts to Puss in Boots, the one with the money that finances things to happen. And Jean Chabot is the one that gave the okay for the uh, Louis de Sioux and the making of the North American continent and eventually its destruction. Jean Chabot was basically funded by the nuns of Rome who had the archives of everything going back to 7,500 B.C. Remember that program I told you to watch about the uh, monasteries, or not monasteries, but symbolisms in Turkey? Oh, yeah, yeah, go, go back to Yeah. And that's where the archives begin for the time after the Ice Age. 
But the only people who would have that are the nuns in the monasteries because the priests go out and get it, bring it in, and think it's theirs, but they are the bureaucracy. The, the, the nuns are the bureaucracy, and they pilfer and steal from the archives all of the important stuff so that over time, nunneries, and in our lifetime, the Carmelites, which are the German blue nuns, began the process of transferring everything into modern language. And in North America, they were assisted by the Grey Duds, which was created by the wife of a bootlegger in Montreal. They have the data. They do genetic engineering. They do it in secret. And that's why nuns always were told they had to wear garments down to the floor so that they, in fact, would, would not appear to be pregnant when they were. And, and in uh, Asia, uh, the, uh, the women are told to wear a burqa and even hide their faces so that it could be used as a disguise for men and other women when they're doing something secretive, such as crossing a border. Uh, so that people think they're, they're women who are part of the, uh, the community, but it's basically just a disguise. No woman in her right mind would want to dress that way with just her eyes showing. That's basically telling the world, I'm not important. There's nothing about me that anybody in the world could care for. They become slaves to a man who treats them like slaves. And if the man won't do it, then the community will. Family, and then community, and then country. Well, yeah, before I forget, Glenn, I wanted to ask you, um, with the whole process of the electromagnetism stuff, um... Well, I can't talk to you now, because the last thing I told you before I realized the phone wasn't working is I got to go feed some animals. Oh, I didn't hear that part. Oh, okay. So start uh, doing some research, okay. uh, and you can do that by looking up... Uh, Michael Faraday, Faraday yeah. on on the internet. Yeah. If you don't have Michael Faraday's details on the internet, then you can probably get it in an old dictionary, preferably one printed in the early, very early 1900s or 1800s, <coughs> because that's when they started cleansing the dictionary as women were allowed publicly to learn to read, they had to make sure that the information the priest thought was confidential to them alone no longer showed up. But in fact, the nuns had already stolen it out of the archives. Okay, I got to go feed the animals, so if you want to talk again, call back later or some other some other time. Okay. Okay, Glenn. Bye. Bye okay. for now. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.